proceeds or redevelop to cut costs. Again, live house coverage now on C-SPAN. This will be in order. The chair lays before the House a communication from the Speaker. The Speaker's Rooms, Washington, D.C., February 6, 2012. I hereby appoint the Honorable Jeff Denham to act as Speaker pro tempore on this day. Signed, John A. Boehner, Speaker of the House of Representatives. The Chair will receive a message. Mr. Speaker, a message from the President of the United States. Mr. Speaker. Mr. Secretary. I am directed by the President of the United States to deliver to the House of Representatives a message in writing. Thanks a lot. Pursuant to the order of the House of, of January 17, 2012, the Chair will now recognize members from lists submitted by the majority and minority leaders for morning hour debate. The Chair will alternate recognition between the parties with each party limited to one hour and each member other than the majority and minority leaders and the minority whip limited to five minutes each. But no event shall debate continue beyond 1.50 p.m. The chair recognizes the gentlewoman from California, Ms. Capps, for five minutes. The gentleman from California, Ms. Capps, is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. <clears throat> Mr. Speaker, there's an old saying that goes, when all you have is a hammer, every problem looks like a nail. These days, it seems the Republican toolbox is down to just one tool. Because for all the energy choices available to America, every Republican energy plan centers on one thing, drilling for more oil. First, it was simply, drill here, drill now. Well, we are. There is more drilling taking place in the U.S. lands and waters now than during the Bush administration. Indeed, last year we relied less on foreign oil than in any of the past 16 years. And clean, renewable energy usage is at an all-time high as well. But then it was, drill for energy independence. Sounds great. But unfortunately, we can't simply drill our way to energy independence. Even with all the expanded drilling we are doing, the plain fact is that we use too much oil and have too, many, too few domestic reserves. And that, next it was, drilling will create jobs and put everyone back to work. That claim was based on borderline fictional numbers in a report bought and paid for, surprise, by the oil industry. Now House Republicans have found a new problem that can only be solved by opening more of the country to risky and reckless drilling, filling the funding gap in the Highway Trust Fund. <coughs> Excuse me. Their latest proposal would combine three bills to open more of America's most sensitive lands and waters to drilling. Supposedly, this is how we're going to fund repairs to America's crumbling bridges and highways. It shouldn't come as a surprise that, again, the numbers don't add up. Proponents of this approach now claim that we can make up the $6 billion a year shortfall in the Highway Trust Fund by mandating oil drilling just about everywhere. <coughs> Yet according to the nonpartisan Congressional Budget Office, drilling for oil and gas in protected coastal waters as they wish would produce, at best, would produce only about 80 million barrels per year. 
about $80 million per year of assets. That's a small fraction of the funds needed to repair and upgrade America's roads and bridges. They also want to open up a pristine coastal plain of Alaska's Arctic Wildlife Refuge, a special place I visited, and speed up development of federal oil shale deposits across the West. <coughs> Any potential revenues from this drilling, however, will not come close to meeting the needs of Highway Trust Fund either. And whatever minimal funds do materialize would not be available for several years, maybe a decade. In other words, it's too little and it's too late. Mr. Speaker, the only way to make progress in solving our current fiscal mess is not to create a new round of giveaways and favors to the oil industry. It would be better to start cutting some of the unnecessary tax breaks that the oil and gas industry now receives and use that money to pay for the transportation bill. And that's because they're unnecessary. Of the world's 12 most profitable companies, la corporations last year, fully half were oil companies. Repealing these tax breaks would save more than $40 billion over 10 years, which would alone cover almost all the gap in the highway trust fund revenues. <coughs> Americans are already squeezed at the pump. There is no reason why they should be handing over tax dollars to these wildly profitable companies. Mr. Speaker, the Deepwater Horizon oil spill was the worst in history, crippling the Gulf Coast economy, destroying livelihoods of fishermen and tour operators, and killing wildlife for hundreds of miles. It was eerily similar to the destructive oil spill of 1969. And that's when Santa Barbara beaches were smothered with oil, that's where I come from, that killed thousands of birds, fish, and sea lions. <coughs> Excuse me. Now House Republicans want to expose more of our coastal communities, including Santa Barbara and Ventura counties, to the tender mercies of the oil and gas industry. They want to mandate new drilling off Central Coast beaches, despite our community's long-held view that the current drilling should be ended, not extended. And they want to gut the environmental laws of our state and our that our community has used to protect <coughs> its coastline from the kinds of devastation the 1969 oil spill brought to Santa Barbara. This might be good news for oil companies, but it's bad news for my constituents, and it's bad energy policy. Perhaps most ominously, Mr. Speaker, this proposal is bad news for the prospect of a new transportation bill. These new oil drilling provisions are poison pills and could doom passage of this desperately needed jobs legislation. This is very reminiscent of the manufactured crises we saw last year to keep the government funded pay our debts and continue the payroll tax. We all saw the chaos and gridlock those fights produced. So we need to put aside this effort and use the transportation bill as a means to push forward favored policies expired. for an already tempered industry. I yield back. Pursuant to Clause 12A of Rule 1, the chair declares the House in recess until 2 p.m. today. Well, the House is in recess.